Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rumbling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because they can. And they continue with Call of Cthulhu blind. I'm still here in uh, Francis Sanders office. I've explored all of it, but I haven't yet talked to Cat. Oh, actually didn't explore all of it. There's still this book. You read the book. Well, what book is it? Will I have the choice? Read it. Well, judging from, from the fact that it gives me a choice, I would say it's an important book. Uh, and generally speaking, given the choice between knowing something and not knowing something, I think knowing it is uh, a nobler goal, uh, even if the truth is difficult. So, whatever. Read the book, because I'm kind of... Uh, afraid that if I choose to not read the book, uh, it's going to n not give me the option to read it again. I would like to, you know, have a closer look at the title because can't really read that, but whatever, read the book. Ah, this will affect your destiny. It's the Maleus Bestiarum uh, that was mentioned in, in one of the notes. It's a kind of encyclopedia of monstrous and unknown creatures. I'm beginning to believe that they exist. There is the other sign again. Some monstrous hounds. Tentacle. Well, that's... I think that's everything now. So... Let's talk to Cat Baker. That's twice you've stepped on my toes, Detective. Try not to make a habit of it. I've got a lot of bad habits. Some can be more fatal than others. What have you come looking for in this gallery? Uh, I'm not sure if it's worth to lie about it. Another painting by Sarah Hawkins. One connected to the horrors I've discovered on this island. What a surprise. I'm listening. Mm, to be honest, I also feel like she might not be connected with the occult at all. She seems far too uh, practically minded with, with the organized crime and the uh, moonshine making uh, to be obsessed with like cults or whatever. It doesn't seem too profitable to me in the end. At least up to the point where the old ones do indeed rise, because if they do, then I guess they would, uh, you know, uh, reward their servants, but as is, you know, as an occupation, I don't think being a cultist uh, pays well. And you? What brings you to the Sanders home? I'm here on business. Irene asked me to liquidate all these paintings. She doesn't intend to hang around here for long. Why you? Believe it or not, there aren't many collectors on Darkwater. It needs someone with a network and a means of transport to the mainland. A choice that comes down to Fitzroy and me. And I'm far more pleasant, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Not now, sweetheart. I'd like to read this without some snoop looking over my shoulder. Okay, so I guess... Hmm. It's, it's the annotated Bible again. Interesting. Go take a hike, detective. Well... Okay, I guess it's time to enter the gallery. Okay, this is a cool painting. Like, it's a little bit too much in your face, as far as creepiness goes, but it, at least it's more attention-grabbing than the original painting that started the game. This is this, to be honest. Again, the, the Cthulhu Virgin Mary. Like, it, it cracks me up the most that, that uh, she still has the, like, the shawl uh, on her head. And there are some uh, writings on the base of the statue, but can't decipher them. Some scarabs. And a dagger. It's actually a little bit similar to the dagger I found 
in the... These artifacts date from pre-Columbian times. Mm, artifact, uh, the, the dagger I found in the caves. And this egg, or whatever it is, it's also kind of similar to one of the, like, lamp posts or something. Masks, more daggers. Some weird fish-like blob. Some stone tablets. More daggers. Whoa. Whoa. That's... That's immensely cool. Like, it reminds me of, of Tomb Kings from uh, Warhammer. You know, this, this mix of an Egyptian Sphinx and a skeleton. Cool. Oh, this is, this is a copy of a painting that was in the Hawkins Manor. More daggers and coins. Another one of those weird death sphinxes. That's immensely cool. Really like it. Not sure what this is about. It looks pretty normal ish. It's compared to all of the other things. Hmm, this is a shambler. Well, obviously, I'll approach the shambler last. Hmm, does, do, do the paintings repeat? Nope, it's a little bit different. There are more like moles on this as opposed to the previous one. The public entrance to the gallery. Wow, even the ceiling itself is, is some kind of a weird pattern. I really like this location. There are a lot of cool designs here. Hmm, this seems like a different version of the painting uh, from uh, earlier with the woman. Bear fi fighting a uh, something. Or eating a seal? Sure. Or screaming faces. It seems like two different versions of the same painting. Uh, a bit like uh, those Andy Warhol uh, paintings. The, the most famous ones with the, f the face in different colors. Hmm. I can't... Why doesn't he comment on this? Or knives? I can't click on it. Even though it's, it's highlighted. Even more knives, man. Must have been at least a little bit obsessed with knives. Uh, okay, this is creepy as well. Again, in a, in a little bit of a direct uh, manner, but still. Cool. Like, to be honest, most of the pieces in this gallery are uh, more interesting than the initial painting that started, uh, you know, this game. Which I find to be weird. Why was he so interested in old weapons? Yeah, that, that's kind of my, my point. Exactly. Whoa. Hey, this this is a larger version of that little of that little figurine from before. And with the horns. Some stone tablet. And this location is seriously cool. It's carabs. Huh, and this is like a lion with like a tentacle beard. The man transforms an entire wing of his manor into an art gallery. And a very cool art gallery at that. Hmm. 
What is this? It's like a child smothering a goose or a... Some kind of a bird? Weird. Melting human. At least, that's what it looks like. Because it's not entirely a skeleton, but yet you can clearly see some of the bones. And again with the child. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. But this one has like blood all over it. Like bleeding eye holes. Man. <sighs> kind of disturbing. And again, this, this seems to be a larger replica of the bear fighting a seal, but this one is... I think it's a... Well, I think it's a seal. But this one is also splattered with blood. Weird. Mm. Okay. I think that's everything. Hmm. Okay. In a way, I find this more disturbing than the skeleton ones, because at least a skull is a shape that you're, you know, familiar with. Is a skull, all things considered, isn't that scary because it's normal. You know, we all have skulls. Uh, whether this, you know, this melting visage with like no discernible features other than the mouth and the, the, th the teeth, I feel like this is a lot more disturbing. Oh, I guess it's time. Oh, there's a note, so I'll read it first. Is this dagger part of Sander's collection, or was he seeking to acquire it? Uh, far from possessing the talents of Sarah Hawkins, Sanders drew a dagger with a tortured form down to the smallest detail. The guard carries a strange esoteric symbol, a recurring feature of his correspondence with Sarah. Hmm. Perhaps I should look for it before I... Okay, it's not this one. I don't think it's this one either. Why was he so interested in old weapons? It might be this one. Though I think the drawing was a little bit more... For some reason I can't comment on this. Um, I think the, the, the blade was a little bit more circular at the base. Okay, it's clearly not this one. It, it entered like a loop. Mm. Okay, to be honest, out of all of those, I feel like... Like... Um, this one is indeed the closest match, maybe? Although... Or maybe... No, 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 I think this... Why was he so interested in old This weapons? has a, like, a, like a loop, like a circle at the bottom. And it also has a small elder sign, I think, on the handle. But I can't take it yet, so I guess I'll finally look at the Shambler. What the hell was that? Okay, judging by the note, I would guess that I need the... Uh, I need the... Uh, the 
think it's what it means. Perhaps I should just run. Uh, judging from the note, I would say that I need the dagger. So was it this one? Damn. This dagger looks different. What now? I stop the painting? You sure you won't be needing that hand? You're losing it, detective. At this rate, you're right. The bottle will get you before I do. You didn't see anything. I saw you within an inch of putting a dagger through your forearm. Did I miss something more interesting? Mm, that was... weirdly anticlimactic. Like, I liked the animation for it getting out of the picture, but the design of the creature itself was nothing to write home about, and the whole sequence was pretty short, because uh, I just ran to get the dagger and then stab the painting and... Uh, done. Sanders was right. This painting is cursed. What are you talking about? I was attacked by a creature. I pushed it back, I think. I... I think so too. <laughs> he probably th she probably thinks that I'm mm, insane. Although maybe she knew. You knew. You knew about the beast. What are you talking about? Think yourself lucky that I saved your hand, even if it was to save my goods. You mean me? Don't flatter yourself, sweetheart. I'm talking about the contents of this gallery. And by the way, where do you think you're going with that dagger? It saved my life. It's an extraordinary dagger. You should talk to Algernon Drake. He's an antique dealer here on Darkwater. He'll tell you all about it. From what I saw in the ledgers, it was him who sold it to Sanders. Mm. It's not your style to give me free information like that. Take it as payment for being my canary. A simple trade-off. Now go see your antique seller. I still got things to settle with Irene. <laughs> Chapter 7 The Nameless Bookstore the Shambler turned out to be much more than an artwork painted by Sarah Hawkins as a huge creature came out of the painting to attack Pierce. After a hard fight, the detective managed to send it back into the painting. Well, it wasn't a hard fight at all. He later discovered that the dagger he used had been sold to Sanders by a man named Algernon Drake, owner of the nameless bookstore. Pierce decided to pay the library a visit. Kinda cheeky to call your to, to give your bookstore a name that's literally the nameless bookstore. Like, it's kind of like a catch-22 situation. Where is the bookseller? Oh, so I'm pretty sure somebody must have broke in, right? So they broke this piece of window of the window to open the door from the other side. And I guess they might, must have hurt their arm 
And that's why blood, there's blood on it. Freud's The Interpretation of Dreams. It's the work that laid the foundations of psychoanalysis at the beginning of this century. Yeah, right. Because at, uh, at this point, uh, I'm pretty sure Freud is, is uh, alive and currently working as a psycho psychoanalysst back in Europe. Uh, this practical work written by Sigmund Freud was for psychologists. What? Sigma, written by Sigmund Freud for psychologists. Again, that's a weird syntax. Describes the techniques of analytical interpretation of dreams. The analysis must follow several rules, especially that of free association, principle announced by Freud at the end of the 19th century. It treats dreams as a way of revealing buried desires. I cannot believe that this theory is applicable to my nightmares. Huh? But it still gave me a bonus. It it's interesting that it gave me a bonus in medicine. You'd think, if anything, it would have given me a bonus in psychology. An old diary. A pastor's wife, volume 4. So it's a continuation. The pastor declared himself to be a prophet. He renounced God and worshipped strange pagan deity with a monstrous appearance. His wife tried to reason with her husband, but in vain. He was convinced that he must listen to the voice in his head as it holds the truth. I wonder if this is about the Leviathan or about Cthulhu, or if the Leviathan and Cthulhu are one. Because that's also technically, technically a possibility, I guess. History of Dark Water, Volume 2. A Puritan, pur puratic, puri Puritan colony led by Reverend John Wickwood settled on the island during the 17th century. They named the island Dark Water because of the dark shades of the sea. They believed it was because of a peculiar color of the rocks surrounding the island. They erected the first buildings, among which were the Hawkins Manor, the church and the cemetery. The rare documents and handwritten notes they spoke they left spoke of nightmares and deviant behaviors. They disappeared at the beginning of the 18th century. I should probably take my lamp out. Breviary of Medicine, Tome 3. After a few years back, oh, even a few years back, it was possible for a single practitioner to know all the medical knowledge of his time. This book, which concludes the series, shows that this is now virtually impossible. About ten renowned doctors took part in putting together this collection. The Book of Zion is the foundational work behind Helena Blavatsky's Theosophical Movement. Its followers place truth on the same footing as a religion. Stanzas of Zion. These Tibetan writings are at the origin of the esoteric movement founded by Helena Blavatsky at the end of the 19th century. The creator of Theosophy would have drawn extensively on the text of this work, but no one has ever been able to consult them. I thought they didn't exist. This book, discovered in the nameless bookstore on Darkwater, would be as much a fake as an irrefutable proof of Blavatsky's sincerity. Okay. I know little of what that means, but apparently Pierce found it enlightening enough to increase his uh, occult knowledge. Biology, mythology, biology again. Weird. read the book. Oh, so it's another of those occult books. Yeah, right. Let's go all the way to insanity. It's, it's the proper way to play this kind of a game. What does this strange book contain? This book contains unholy knowledge. Maleus Bestiarum. This collection of catalogues classifies creatures that I have never heard of. 
divinates from the stars, creatures capable of traveling from one dimension to another, it presents itself as the reference work on the best mystery of the myth, without giving details on the mythology to which it refers, its pages are covered with phantasmagorical illustrations. This kind of looks like the Shambler itself. Okay, anatomical diagrams can't really interact with those. Let's check the other part from here. I can't really discern any of the titles. Hmm, that's a pretty exquisite chalice. History of Dark Water, Volume 4. In the 19th century, as the American whaling industry reached its peak in the rest of the world, whales gradually disappeared from the waters surrounding dark water. This phenomenon appears even more mysterious because up until then, the region was a favored refuge for cetaceans. In 1847, after months of pursuit, Sela returned to the port with the gigantic creature on board. His crew asserts that a sea monster had eaten all the disappeared whales. After a night of ferocious combat, the survivors managed to drag the beast to a whaling ship. This is about the miraculous catch. Wait, 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 wait. There's literally a book called Cthulhu. J just Cthulhu. There, there's, it's a p pretty thick book and it, it's literally called Cthulhu. That's pretty significant to me, but unfortunately I can't read that, so I guess Pierce himself doesn't realize uh, how significant that is. Astronomy. I can't interact with anything else here. Linguistics. History. What happened here? Well, I'll enter the reconstruction in a moment, but first I want to check in the present. See if there's anything interesting around. A handbook on anatomy and dissection. The least that can be said about this book is that its title, title is well conceived. The illustrations of human anatomy and dissection methods presented are illustrated in great detail. Wait, what? Again, this sentence makes no sense. The illustrations are illustrated in great detail. Who writes like that? You have to have a strong heart or the detachment proper to doctors to consult its pages. A strange amulet. I have a feeling I'd better not touch it. He said, without touching it. Amulet in the shape of a dog. Strange amulet. The pendant is in the shape of a large dog. I don't know what it represents. I must. F I might find out more by searching the bookstore. And he took it. Well, it's his own, it, it's his own fault. Well, I guess it's my fault because I ordered him to do it. Again, a book literally called Cthulhu and I can't read it. Kind of infuriating, to be honest. Painting of a woman. A crowbar. Dead uh, cockroaches and a dead rat. Oh, what does it hold? Ah, there's safe inside, but I guess I should consult the memory first. 
Let's start over. Where did they break in from? Well, obviously they broke the glass to reach the door handle. Blood. Seems like amateur work. To whom does this footprint belong? Hmm. Okay, nothing in here. Which I guess they wouldn't go this way, they went for the safe, right? This burglar seems to be rather clumsy. Like, they wouldn't have much reason, presumably, to search the other sections. What killed all these animals? What sort of thief leaves his tools at the crime scene? What happened that made the burglar flee before finishing his work? Well, maybe it was the Elder Sign. Yep. What the... Charles Hawkins? Yeah, and the Elder Sign repelled him because he's a servant of uh, Cthulhu. Looks like the symbol rejected Hawkins. Yep. What sort of power did Sarah Hawkins' painting possess? Oh, well, so apparently they've hidden some book in there. Sarah Hawkins helped hide something in this safe. Drake put in a great deal of effort to hide whatever is in here. Everything is linked to the Sarah Hawkins case. Okay, I think I'm s I've searched everything. Uh, judging, judging, judging from the fact that the symbols to leave the reconstruction have appeared. So, let's go from the safe again. Mm. So there are three dials, and I guess I need to find the code. Okay, there is clearly something here that uh, I guess that was uh, Drake was looking at. Drake left instructions on how to find the combination of his safe. Mm. A page seems to be hidden here. It's possible to read. If somebody finds these mem memoirs, there will be no doubt that I am in serious trouble. My last and only hope is that my body and bones are still in this plane of reality in order that they be recovered and burned. The funeral urn must be given to my dear mother if she is still of this world. The following message is of capital importance. Whoever reads these lines and demonstrates acuity as sharp as mine and hope to gain access to my most precious possession lies within my safe and the clues to the combination are to be found in three cylinders, each hidden where life and study combine in the Greek world. Each cylinder is numbered, even if, as the pressure as the as the celebrated celebrated author says, order is the pleasure of reason, but this order is the delight of the imagination. Indeed, despite my preference for organized chaos, I must admit that the reason usually prevailed prevails in the end. If by chance a person, or should I say a genius, was to match my intellect and find the combination to the safe, I would ask that they de they deliver the contents into safekeeping of my friend and colleague, Professor Armitage of Miskatonic University. The contents of this safe is not only of vast divest of digest of knowledge, but also a weapon that is far too dangerous for to fall it into wrong hands. I hope that you will be able to appreciate the danger that this represents, and that you will act accordingly. In any event, I will neither be there to guide you, nor to suffer from your actions. Okay, so... I need to find the cylinders for the phonograph, but before I do that... Is everyone on this island taking sleeping pills? <laughs> it's kind of my question as well at this point. Does the bookseller suffer from insomnia? 
What link did he find between Charles Hawkins and an old amulet? Key of relay file. Uh, this key that bears the other sign is the only one able to protect your psyche. It is in the form of a cylindrical medallion hanging at the end of the heavy chain. Hundreds of, year, hundreds of years ago, the star and the branch whose purpose is to push back the forces of the Great Old Ones were engraved on its center. Everything points to it being Charles Hawkins that tore it from its last owner, an Egyptian antique dealer. The press cuttings that mentions this misdemeanor, the date of the robbery, coincides with the last of Hawkins' trips to Cairo. Uh, it remains to be seen whether he knows of the true purpose of the artifact. Try to find it. The Kigli Museum of Egyptian Wonders closes its doors. Sold for $2,000. Okay, there's a bajillion of things to be interacted with here. Arkham editions? Never heard of them. Uh, yeah, actually, Arkham. Uh, Arkham and the University of uh, the Miskatonic University are both like famous places in the mythos of Lovecraft stories. Uh, and it's actually from Lovecraft that Batman uh, took the inspiration to name the um, Arkham Asylum, um, As the Thought and Other Horrors, a collection of poems by, Ed by Edward Pickman. Uh, Pickman is, is also a reference to the Pickman's Gallery, although I think it was called something else. But it was a story about a mad painter. It wasn't that different from the case of Sarah Hawkins, because he was painting all those weird shapes and figures, and everyone thought had, he just had a very vivid imagination, but the twist of the story was that in the end the protagonist discovered that he painted them all from nature because they were all le all real abominations that actually existed. Also known as Nightmare Lyrics, this collection of poems was sensationally received when it first published. Derby was only 18 years old. This volume is part of the Arkham Anthology, a luxurious collection of treaties and works on the esotericism and the supernatural. How many volumes are there in this collection? Isis Unveiled. I somehow doubt that's the Isis I thought of. A book of esoteric philosophy and the key text in the Madame Blavatsky theosophical movement. This volume is part of the Arkham Anthology. This is the same. Another volume by Arkham Editions. The Key of Salomon, a book of spells supposedly written by the legendary King Salomon, contains various rituals and invocations and rituals of curse. Re-edition by Claudia D. Waits, based on De Lawrence's original. Arkham Editions. Never heard of them. Hey, you're starting to repeat yourself. Massa di Re Requiem Per Shugai. Opera in eight acts, infamous reliquary work published in Italy in 1768, is said, said to be an opera. Was, it is said that the opera was performed only once, resulting in an audience riot that left several dead and missing. To be honest, it kind of makes me. This description kind of makes me want to delve deeper into it, but unfortunately, it seems I can't. How many volumes are there in this collection? They read that. Another volume by Arkham Editions. The Prophecies. Uh, a collection of long-term astrological predictions written in verse. Written by Nostradamus, translated by Leoni. Arkham Editions. Never heard of them. Orea, Oera Linda. An ancient Frisian manuscript translated by William. This text claims that in the distant past, Europe and the other continents were controlled by the mothers of this people, and moreover, that our alphabet is derived from the Frisian language. How many volumes are there in this collection? Things that should not be. 
collection of essays on American folklore and urban legends, written by the professor of Miskatonic University. Another volume by Arkham Editions. Corpus Hermeticarum. It means something like the closed body, the hermetic body, uh, written by this guy. This collection of texts on different beliefs was written by a legendary philosopher. It includes a translation of the Emerald Tablet, a popular text among 16th century alchemists. Arkham editions? Never heard of them. Okay, well, look, look at that already. Okay, the, the, the Arkham edition books are clearly significant because they didn't, like once I read them once, they didn't disappear uh, from the tooltip. Mm. Now, it said something about the Greek world? So, wh where, the, where art and study intersect in the Greek world. So I would imagine uh, it refers to uh, philosophy? Is there, is there a shelf on philosophy? Poetry. Astronomy. Kind of chalice. Um, this goblet seems to be very ancient. It seems to be made of gold and decorated with real precious stones. Do the, rub do the rubies and sapphires make up a special motif? I don't know. Okay, this is the phonograph, but I don't have. I don't have the the, the what's are they, what are they, are they called rolls tapes. Things are not looking good for whites. All right, that's true. There's something here. Book on anatomy and dissection. Book 2. Precise and illustrated with as much detail as the first volume. This book fo focuses on healing surgeries specific to malformations and motor disorders. Okay. Cylinders that Drake tried to hide. I should perhaps listen to them. Okay, I'm not sure what this part specifically had to do with the Greek world. Like, what's what's this shelf about even? Is it called something? Biology. But hmm. yeah, I'm not sure. Like, I pretty much clicked on it because it was there. It showed up. The icon showed up. But I didn't like. No, I didn't. What's the word? Deduce it or something. Well, let's listen to the thingy magics. Although, actually, I feel like this episode has been long enough, so you know what? I'm going to uh, read the journal now, so if you're not interested in that, uh, as always, you, you can skip the rest. So, uh, first to finish those paragraphs. The, sham mm, the Shambler is much more than a painting. Something happened in the Sanders Gallery. I don't think that I am still affected by the riverside gases, so what happened could not have been a hallucination. A monstrous creature came, came out of the painting, chased me all around the gallery. I managed to save it, send it back by stabbing the painting with a dagger, burying the motif I know. Am I losing my mind? Probably. Uh, that's what the story is about, mostly, I would imagine. A uh, cat found out the dagger, found out where the dagger that pushed back the creature came from. A certain Algernon Drake sold it to Sanders. 
I've got to speak with him and find out if I live what I lived through really happened. Mm. I left the Sanders house, still shaken by my encounter with the Shambler. Thanks to Kat's indications, I ended ended up at the nameless bookstore, a haunt for devotees of esotericism. The place seems to have been bur burglarized. Who could have done such a thing? Charles Hawkins tried to burglarize Algernon Drake's bookstore, but how is it possible given the fact that he's supposed to be dead? There's a lot more behind this story than mere conjugal drama. What did Sarah Hawkins and Algernon Drake try to hide in their latter's safe? So Algernon Drake, the owner of the bookstore, also knew Sarah Hawkins. Their relationship went far beyond that of a seller and a faithful client. She helped him to protect an object. They hid it in the back of a safe, and Sarah Hawkins painted this strange symbol on the door. Charles Hawkins must have wanted to steal it. I must open the safe and find out what's inside. How can I find the combination? Okay, Pierce. I have two points which I will spend on weapons. Sanity. <laughs> I am, you know, 100% on the path to being a complete nut job. Like, I, I haven't skipped a single opportunity to, to do something crazy. Uh, Malleus Bestiarum. Pierce read an ancient treatise. The bestiary makes an inventory of numerous creatures from the occult world of parallel dimensions. The very nature of this knowledge makes it un an unholy book. By reading it, Pierce lost some of his sanity. Meet the Shambler. Uh, in the Francis Sanders private gallery, but Pierce discovered the identity of the Shambler, huge artwork painted by Sarah Hawkins. When Pierce approached it, a creature burst forth from the painting and immediately chased after him. The beast from another dimension is such a hold on the mind of a person who, ha who finds himself in its presence that a simple glance in its direction is enough for Pierce to lose some sanity. Pierce finally managed to send the Shambler back using a dagger engraved with a strange symbol, but this encounter has left, it, left its mark on the psyche of the investigator. Still under the influence of the creature, he almost stabbed his own hand. Dark Water. Sanders Residence. Sanders' house in all the shades of red and gold is impressive. But nothing matches the private gallery of Francis. This place is huge and entirely dedicated to the passion for traveling and macabre works. The faced figures of virgins, sacrificial da daggers, statues of monsters, and the painting that led to his demise takes the center stage. Shambler, a paint painting by Sarah Hawkins, a close friend of the couple. What happened in this room, I will never be able to forget it. The Nameless Bookstore. I've never seen such a collection of works on magic and occultism. Algernon Drake, the owner, prides himself on being a luminary study of the esoteric phenomena. The library was ransacked during an attempted burglary. It holds numerous rare or forbidden works. The back room houses a safe, protected by an ancient symbol. Okay, so... With that, and this is nothing new. So the burglary, the nameless burglars, uh, the nameless, the nameless bookstore's burglar came through the door. A bit further, some knocked-over object allows the trail to be followed into the back room. There, the mess next to the safe confirms the person's aim. However, there is no material evidence to support my hunch uh, as to the identity of the burglar, Charles Hawkins did indeed appear to me, as well as the star symbol on the door of the safe. I cannot determine if the presence of Sir Hawkins in my projections is the result of unconscious work of my mind, or whether it's proof, it proves that the case obsesses me. What? Again, it's weird. Is this how would you, you would say it? Like, it's, it's, it's you. Who obsesses over a case? You cannot 
you are obsessed by the case, but I don't think you can say that the case obsesses you, unless you are in Soviet Russia. Maybe I'm wrong. It, it is how you say it. Don't. Okay, quite a bit here. Dimensional Shambler comes from a dark and inhospitable dimension. A variety of food sources keeps it in a permanent state of, starva of starvation. That is why it is a, in a constant state of readiness to travel to other dimensions in order to feed on its inhabitants. Make sure you never weaken the veil of your dimension, otherwise you'll risk attracting this very dangerous creature. Should this happen, you just have to lay a, a eyes upon it for its being to anchor itself in your dimension and allow it allow it uh, to rip you to shreds open with its paws. Maleus Bestiarium. Men will gather the knowledge through the lines dictated to me by the Great Old Ones, but also in other volumes. The visions that assail me, whispering me names and silhouettes of mystical creatures, soon a repository of all anatomical cosmic and dimensional knowledge will be seen as authoritative work. This book, unholy among the most cursed books, will one day be the final rampart between man and the predators that are waiting to devour him, hidden behind the veils of parallel dimensions. Dagger of the Ancients This ex exceptional dagger of Ottoman origin probably dates from the 16th century, bears the elder sign on its hilt. It apparently belonged to this guy, Grand Vizier, the court of Suleiman the Magnificent. Legend uh, tells that Pargali used the symbol on the dagger to protect the court from a creature that haunted the mirrors of the palace. What is certain is that Suleiman had his vizier executed. Did he Fear him after the demonstrate after this demonstration of power, extract from art and mysticism, Francis Sanders for the forgotten object. Painting of the of the Shambler, the painting was exposed in Sanders' gallery, but I think that the creature creature no longer no longer requires it for movement. It went down to hunt to hunt down Sanders in the cellars of the institute. I do not know where it comes from, but one thing is sure: it's starving. Did they succeed in sending it back to its world? I'm not sure. Extract from the note of Edward Pierce. The Hound. Huh. I think The Hound is actually um, another, another short story by Lovecraft. I think it was about people who used to rob graves, but in one of them they encounter, oh, or near one of them in the cemetery they encounter this hound, but I, I don't remember the, the details of it. Do not make mis the mistake of taking this jewel for an inanimate object. The soul of a powerful sorcerer, devourer of bodies of the Leng cult, taken from Central Asia, lies in this jade amulet. Its very characteristic form, a massive hunting, do hunting dog, represents the transformation of a sorcerer into a man-eating ghoul. Whoever unearths the amulet is at risk of the sorcerer's wrath. The latter will return in the shape of a formidable hunter to track and dismember all defilers. Oh, it sucked that I picked it up then. I do have the cylinders for the phonograph. Okay, th those descriptions are all the same as they were where I first uh, picked them up, so no point in reading them again. And um, with that, I conclude the episode. That's all for this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!